we're talking about the Green New Deal, one of the few proposals where you can find articles that are actually longer than the legislation itself. I'm not talking about this because it's going to pass. I mean, it has a snowball's chance in, well, global warmed America. Nope, instead I'm talking about it because over the past few months, it feels like nobody with an opinion about this has actually read it. In terrible journalistic fashion, I'm going to start with the single most important point of this video. Importantly, it's a non-binding resolution, meaning that even if it were to pass, it wouldn't itself create any new programs. God, it feels so good to get that off my chest. If you think this is going to ban cows and cars, nope. If you think this is going to cost tens of trillions of dollars, no. The only expense to passing this is the paper it's going to be printed on. Basically, if this gets passed, we're sticking a post-it note on Trump's fridge saying, hey, Congress thinks you should do something about the environment. Don't get me wrong, I think climate change is a real problem and it's going to get a whole lot worse. But this resolution itself is so pointless, I think it could be safe for a toddler to play with. Whew, that feels good. With all of that, let's get into what's actually in this bill. And from this point onward, imagine everything I say less as a lawyer dictating out terms and more as a mother saying, you know, you should really go to law school, settle down with a girl, and achieve net zero greenhouse emissions through a fair and just transition for all communities and workers. Right off the bat, I'm hitting a wall covering this, because I generally talk about policies, but there's not one policy proposal in this entire resolution. Let's see what I can scrape together though. Some of its aims include transitioning the country away from fossil fuels, decreasing the use of carbon in agriculture, transportation, and infrastructure and aiming to make the economy carbon-free within 10 years. Well, it does say that, but unfortunately that's about as specific as it gets. Starting from the beginning, this legislation starts by summarizing the special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius for the first four and a half pages. Here's a one sentence summary of that report. Because of human activity, the average yearly temperature is going up will soon rise by an additional 1.5 degrees Celsius, and if it does, we're all screwed. Not to downplay the significance of that very, very scary stuff, but you came here to get a summary of the Green New Deal, not a summary of the summary of a report. So at this point, I guess I'll start going over the vague list of things this Green New Deal details. First, it's up to the government to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions through a fair and just transition for all communities and workers. That's great. How? Well, there was one subsection talking in incredibly vague terms about money. I was going to read it word for word, but who boy would your eyes glaze over quickly. Here it is in the corner if you want to pause and read, but basically we should fund all this by having a public-private partnership where we use all public financing options to pay for this. Unfortunately, that's the closest you're going to get to an actual proposal. Next, it aims to create millions of good, high-wage jobs and ensure prosperity and economic security for all people of the United States. You better not be asking how again though, because, well, we don't really know. So we're through the first two bullet points and we're already running at net zero emissions with great jobs for millions and economic security for all. How are there more pages? Well, we haven't yet mentioned our plan to invest in the infrastructure and industry of the United States to sustainably meet the challenges of the 21st century. Literally no more detail on that point though, because who would want any specificity? We'll leave that up to Congress. Oh wait, again? The thing about this is that's kind of a shame is the resolution is a statement of values and as much as it is a political document, right? There's a ton of stuff in here that'd be almost politically impossible even if you broke it into component parts, but there are component parts of this that could get bipartisan support. If we ever have another infrastructure week that deals with infrastructure, you know, there's, there's green infrastructure changes in here. Next, we're going to secure for all people of the United States for generations to come clean air and water, climate and community resiliency, healthy food, access to nature and a sustainable environment. Sounds great. I mean, who could possibly be against that? I feel like I'm reading from a Trump campaign speech here. We're gonna have healthcare for everybody. Nobody's gonna have to pay for it. All the jobs are coming back. The coal? Oh man, we're gonna be eating that stuff. Wall? Mexico's paying for it. 
Unfortunately, again, no real details. I'm especially curious about how all the people are going to have access to nature. I live in New York and I haven't seen a shrub since my last vacation. It probably means we're going to be maintaining our national parks, but this is me trying to interpret this resolution. The last major goal of this legislation is to promote justice and equality by stopping current, preventing future, and repairing historic oppression of indigenous peoples, communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low-income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities, and the youth. Whoa, how did that fall into my climate change legislation? Still, I can't really comment on this because, and I'm not sure I've mentioned this yet, but this legislation is vague as hell. These communities come up one other time when it says that they're disproportionately affected by climate change. Which yeah, that's true, but what's the plan? What will it really cost? Will it hurt poor people or help them? And because of the fact that there's so little substance in this, it's so interesting that everyone's like, chit-chatting about yeah. it and fighting over it because there's nothing there as, as of yet. Yes, that should be the headline of every newspaper talking about this. Oh, man, thank you. There are a lot more suggestions for things that should happen in this, but unsurprisingly, a 14-page resolution hasn't completely plotted out our economic and energy future. I mean, we use the same sort of resolution process to congratulate the Patriots for winning the Super Bowl. The one time I would hope Mitch McConnell would block a piece of legislation. Come on, Bernie Sanders, if there was one time to use the filibuster. And Elizabeth Warren? Really? Just when people were starting to like you again. Now, I've spent all this time poo-pooing this legislation, but it's not exactly deserved. If you view this legislation through the paradigm set up by the mainstream news, yeah, it's terrible. But if you view it through Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's eyes, it is mission accomplished. It is a House resolution. It is a declaration. It is an intentional vision uh, document. And what it does is that it puts uh, forward the large scope, the overall vision of what we're trying to accomplish, and to say, listen, if we're going to make progress, we need to declare our North Star, and our North Star is 100% renewable energy, it's Medicare for all, it's tuition-free public colleges, it's investing in technology and, and renewable, uh, renew, renewable resources and electric vehicles. And, um, and as a result, the, any legislation, any actual bills that do follow from that are pieces of that. Yeah, it wasn't ever meant to do much of anything beyond give lawmakers a target. As if they weren't sure, hmm, the liberals want renewable energy and Medicare for all? It doesn't really matter much whether this passes as long as it gets attention. And considering that months later we're still talking about this, mission accomplished. I look forward to covering the actual legislation that this inspires. Until then, what a waste of time all this media coverage has been. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.